George. Easy, buddy. Easy. Wow, I can't. Come on. I should never have taught you that. Stop that. Now, come on. Now, get me. Come on. Now. Don't do that. What do you think about Norman in RS? I remember being totally unable to get past him as a kid. I just give up playing Sapphire. As an adult, he's easy as you can protect Strat around Slay King. But as a kid, I could not figure out how to get past him. Now, Norman from Petalburg, on the other hand, kicked my f teeth in on my first playthrough of Ruby, and that was my Whitney equivalent. I just didn't understand how Slay King worked. A video on Cynthia would be cool, and maybe one on Norman and his team. Alright, let's talk about the big funny monkey. Generation 3 represented a big mechanical step forwards in the design of Pokemon, with the introduction of abilities. In previous generations, Pokemon essentially consisted only of stats, move pools, typings, and a shared pool of equip items. And while there was some degree of strategy to be had, it was overall rather simplistic in the grand scheme of things. The creation of passive effects and abilities opened the door for a huge number of interesting design concepts. Individual Pokemon could now be made with more unique playstyles styles and niches, and it made certain Pokemon useful in ways that their stats would otherwise not allow for. The huge majority of abilities are typically beneficial in some way, even if those ways are somewhat niche, conditional, or situational. But there are a few abilities designed specifically to be detrimental to their users. Slacking was the first Pokemon to debut this concept and is arguably the most memorable of the group by virtue of being a major midpoint boss courtesy of Norman. As both a playable Pokemon and as a boss, Slacking's gameplay design makes for a rather unique existence within the franchise. So let's discuss each of these roles in order. Slacking has a straightforward but funny gimmick. It has a titanic 670 base stat total, on par with Kyogre and Groudon. But Truant means it only gets to act once every two turns, with the other spent loafing around. The design thought process behind slacking itself is a clear and understandable one. Let's try making a super powerful Pokemon, but then balance it via a handicap ability. Phenomenal, non-cosmic power, but with a costly drawback. This isn't a new concept for games. Typically, in games with multiple options for player side grades, items and options are all designed with a series of different base gameplay attributes. In an ideal theoretical situation, these options are all kept equally viable by sharing the same total value for their attributes, just distributed differently. Now, I must say this is a very simplified way of looking at game balance. In practice, various factors such as unique abilities, game modes, map layout, skill versus risk reward requirements, team composition, and other metagame situations will ultimately result in some attributes being more valuable to players than others. The actual design process for initial game balance is that designers will typically make an estimate on where everything stands before testing and iterating to minimize potential outliers and to keep to the initial estimate as closely as possible. After that, they cross their fingers when the game releases and hope for the best. Nowadays, the ability to issue balance patches post-release has elevated the do-or-die nature of initial balance somewhat. But initial game balance still remains important to this day, as it is critical in forming an important first impression on players. Anyway, tangent over, let's get back to the topic. So, this idea of roughly equal numbers keeps things roughly balanced. But let's be real, it's not particularly exciting. There's relatively little interesting player decision with just numbers alone. So designers will sometimes add in a few curveballs into the mix, with some options featuring unique benefits and drawbacks as the main attraction over raw numbers. The introduction of abilities was sort of Game Freak's early attempts at pushing Pokemon towards that sort of game design philosophy. Now, there are many many different archetypes of game options, and it's a very general topic which could go on for nearly forever. 
ever. But this video is specifically about slacking, so let's get specific. Some games feature stranger, more polarizing side grades, or cursed items. Options with extremely powerful abilities, but super crippling drawbacks. These options crank up the previously tamed balance to more extreme levels, with the intention being to try and tempt players to work their way around the drawback in order to maximize the substantial benefits as much as possible. In the context of being a player-controlled Pokemon, this is essentially what slacking is. It's the only Pokemon in the entire Hoenn games with a costly drawback like this, but it simultaneously tempts and rewards players for using it properly with gargantuan stats. And indeed, it more than proves its competence in an in-game playthrough, as players can maximize slacking's power with moves like Hyper Beam. Nose laser! while minimizing Truant's costs with items and other team members. Do this, and Slacking can prove itself as an amazing Pokemon for any playthrough. But Slacking also serves another, more memorable role, as a boss. And this is what you're probably here for. Slacking is the ace of Norman, the player's father and the game's core mid-game boss. Part of the reason why Norman is so memorable is because defeating him is the main objective for the first half of the game's story, and the other part is because he can be pretty difficult if you aren't prepared for him. The core reason behind Norman's difficulty is simple, an overwhelming stat difference. There are very few Pokemon in the game capable of matching slacking in stats, and none of them are accessible to you at the point where you fight Norman. And unlike Whitney, this wasn't a potential oversight, this was very intentional. Norman and his two slacking are essentially Pokemon's closest attempt at a puzzle boss. A video game archetype in which a boss cannot be defeated via conventional combat means, and instead is designed to be defeated via exploiting a certain trick in the fight. If the player successfully figures out the trick, the battle is extremely easy. But if the player doesn't, the battle can be either extremely difficult or is otherwise unbeatable. In this case, the two big gorillas serve as a nigh impenetrable wall of stats, and the trick to trivialize the battle is all about playing around Truant's mechanics. So let's break down this plodding primate puzzle. Moveset-wise, slacking is designed to punish players for attempting to fight it during turns where it can act, and the ways Norman does this differ based on the game and the slacking in question, because there are 3 slacking in total across 2 different games, and all of them are different. Carelessly using non-attacking moves gets you punished via Focus Punch or Encore. Faint Attack renders Evasion or Accuracy Cheese useless. Facade makes status like Paralysis or Poison into a risky prospect, since it gives slacking a 140 base power stab to work with. Yawn forces a switch during Truant's loafing turn, forcing another Pokemon to come out and deal with slacking's next active turn, meaning you need multiple counters prepared. And lastly, counter punishes you for attacking slacking while it is active and can move. If you don't play around Truant, there is no shortage of ways for these gorillas to tear you apart. But luckily, the trick is straightforward. Don't get hit, idiot. <laughs> If you make yourself unhittable during Truant's active turns, then slacking can't really do anything to you, letting you act for free every other turn. There are two easy ways for players to do this at this point of the game, Protect and Dig. Protect can be learned by certain Pokemon via level up, and Dig can be obtained as a TM from this guy in Farber Town. Unfortunately, you don't get Protect as a TM until after you defeat Norman. If you get yourself a Pelipper or Lyron and alternate between Protect and Growl or Iron Defense respectively, you can effectively neutralize Slacking as a threat for the rest of your team. Or just teach anybody Dig for a couple of free attacks. That's the solution to this puzzle boss which Game Freak created. As long as you take care to protect and attack during alternating turns and match the specific tempo which Truant establishes, Norman can be one of the easiest boss battles in the game. However, that's a conditional if. At the end of the day, most players who experience Ruby and Sapphire for the first time had no real reason to anticipate a puzzle boss in a game like this, and the game itself does a poor job of communicating that there is such an intended solution. When faced with a challenge, the first instinct of any player is to always default to standard game mechanics and tackle it head on. In most games, players are trained to utilize a few simple and easily understood overarching methods to overcome the game, such as jumping over obstacles, 
obstacles or fighting enemies or solving puzzles. There is a lot of room to design interesting gameplay within these overarching methods, but in general players will typically fall back on them even in the face of a difficult challenge. This is because games will reinforce this behavior by rewarding players for getting good and improving their skills. So even when multiple options are provided to the player, if the most basic option still works, players will continue to use it and resort to the path of least divergence. This means that when players first encounter a puzzle boss, their instinctive reaction is to just try again, but harder. As long as they see tangible progress, they will continue to try. Never underestimate player stubbornness. Good puzzle bosses in games need to first break players out of this mindset. Perhaps the boss is invulnerable until a certain trick or condition is fulfilled, or there is a sudden gameplay shift and the player is literally unable to utilize the basic game mechanics entirely. Either way, it needs to be made transparently clear to the player via in-game feedback that the boss cannot be overcome via conventional means and that they need to start thinking of other methods. Pokemon didn't do either of these. You are still allowed to fight and damage slaking conventionally using the game's standard combat system, so it isn't immediately obvious to players that they need to seek out an alternative solution or play at a different tempo to match Truant. This is why Norman has two slackings. It is an attempt to sidestep this issue by presenting an overwhelming amount of stats, but at best, it merely discourages conventional combat and doesn't totally prevent it at all. And this is an unavoidable problem. The structure of Pokemon games simply isn't conducive to the strict enforcement of rules that a puzzle boss demands. The entire foundational idea of the franchise is that players have the total freedom to use any Pokemon they like, and this freedom in turn made the games incompatible with gameplay shifts because they need to account for the entire playable roster. While the main series games do delve into alternate combat systems like contest or fixed puzzle scenarios like Pokestar Studios, they are typically kept aside as optional minigames and don't impede game progression at all. Because of this, players who fight Norman blind simply aren't going to realize he's a puzzle boss. They'll attempt to fight both slackings like with any other Pokemon, only to get punched in the face by two 570 base stat total gorillas, resulting in the impression that Norman is difficult. Sure, some more astute players will notice the unusual behavior of Truant and plan around it, and these players will defeat him easily. But because players have the option to fight and damage slacking via conventional means, the majority of players will simply fall back into ingrained player behavior and just grind more levels to continue attempting brute force. And the thing is, this can work. Sort of. At this mid-stage of the game, the player has access to a decently large pool of options to work with. There are a lot of rock, steel, and fighting type Pokemon and moves, meaning they can still try to muscle past the two slackings without regards for the truant puzzle. Heck, one of the starters is even a fighting type. And again, there is always the universal solution of just grinding to ridiculous levels and brute forcing past the slackings anyway. So solving the puzzle just gets completely ignored. Ignored, it becomes a recommended option rather than an intended solution, which undermines the entire core premise of a puzzle boss entirely. As a puzzle boss, Norman and the Slackings were just destined to fail because they aren't able to commit hard enough to the puzzle. To their credit, Hello? Game Freak quickly realized this wasn't working out. Two years after the initial release of Ruby and Sapphire, Emerald came out and heavily redesigned Norman's entire battle. In Emerald, Norman ditches one Slacking for a Spinder and a Linoon, meaning his battle now only features Truant as one element of the fight and no longer revolves nigh exclusively around it. Norman goes from a somewhat gimmicky puzzle boss into a more conventional boss. Ironically, this Emerald team is potentially much more difficult than his Ruby and Sapphire one because there is no longer a single smart solution to beating him. You need to take on Norman in a normal fight, and that's potentially more challenging than his puzzle boss version. Spinda and Linoon can be decently tough for that stage of the game. Linoon in particular can be unexpectedly dangerous if it manages to set up 
are barely drop. Thankfully, there's no extreme speed. It's possible that Game Freak felt that puzzle bosses such as Ruby and Sapphire's Norman resulted in a polarizing and inconsistent experience. At the end of the day, Pokemon is a game designed to be played by an all-ages audience, and a big portion of such an audience includes young children who might not figure this out. Additionally, Pokemon is a game with a rather simple combat system to learn, with most of its strategic depth and complexity only being relevant in competitive play, meaning there is no reasonable way to train players to look for puzzles. This isn't like The Legend of Zelda where puzzles are everywhere and thus problem solving becomes ingrained into the players. And this design decision carries forward into future games. Ever since Ruby and Sapphire, the main series has never tried to implement a boss like like this ever again. Even the most challenging bosses in the main series all can be defeated via conventional means, regardless of their power level, strategy, or battle format. There is no other fight in the main series which is quite as polarizing in difficulty depending on whether you employed a specific trick or not. The only instance that exists is in Auras, which doesn't really count because it's just Norman again. And that's only because the remakes focus on recreating the original Ruby and Sapphire teams for everybody. This version is nigh identical, but trades facade for retaliate, which makes status effects into a viable solution for handling the slakings, but it still maintains the original truant tempo because now you absolutely need to protect yourself on the first turn, or you get wrecked. Still, all in all, this is an overall nerf to the original Ruby and Sapphire fight. We also see this decision influence the design of future Pokemon as well. Subsequent Pokemon designed with exclusively negative abilities all function in a much more straightforward fashion. These abilities just affect the Pokemon's stats and are tied to straightforward conditions like health or turn count. You basically treat these Pokemon just like with any other Pokemon, only needing to make sure to either fulfill their ability's condition or ensure the ability isn't triggered. None of these downsides are quite as mechanically unusual as Truant. <sighs> Man, I gotta say, when I first started this script, I didn't expect it to go on for this long. But I think that's an indication of how unique Slacking is, both as a Pokemon and as a boss, more so than anything. Despite how Truen seems just like a funny gimmick at first glance, its design and implementation resulted in some pretty far-reaching consequences on every player's experience as they played through Ruby and Sapphire as a whole. So, what are your own thoughts regarding Slacking? Do you agree with my hypothesis or disagree? My word isn't gospel, you know, I'm more than capable of being wrong. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Now, go on, go to bed, or maybe go and watch another video if you want to stay awake. Have a good night.